just because they know their opponent is going to get really greedy with their economy. So you could cast them off guard and try to kill them before they even get that macro up. And uh, Solar's shown it once before. We'll have to get into this game right now to see who's going to do it in this game. Sulky versus Solar, and as you guys are already seeing on the left here, in the top left, the red Zerg is Sulky, and he's going to give Solar a taste of his own medicine. Now, Solar on the opposite side of the map is also going for a fairly early pool first with gas, so it does give him a slight build advantage, I would say. By the way, I have to say, um, Samsung jackets are beast. Uh, <laughs> no, but seriously, like, I know the guy like lurks around Twitch chat, but the Samsung jacket is like yeah, actually my favorite pro gaming it's, jacket. It's pretty beast. The one that we're looking at right now is like the best iteration to it. Looks so good. Just wanted to say that. Just wanted to put that out there. That's my opinion. I'm basically saying yeah. that like it's now, fine. now everybody knows. Yeah, yeah. You got your opinion out there. But uh, yeah, as you were saying, this build is definitely going to favor Solar here. He's got a safe. Pool timing has that gas just for safety. He's going to get a later speed and possibly a later baneling nest once he identifies what Sulky is doing. But he's going to have it on time, on time enough to survive. As long as he doesn't mess up any of his micro, he should have enough to defend eventually. It's a very, very big map. Sulky still doesn't even know where Solar is. Now, the crux of this for Sulky is how much damage can he get done to the hatchery? And like you said, because he doesn't know where he is yet, it's tough for him to even start scratching on that with those Zergling Claws. He's got to get over there and figure this out. Now this Watchtower take here is critical because he's going to see the Scouting Lings and that lets him know exactly where Solar is. But yeah, it Looks like he wants to hide the Lings, actually. He's moving out of the vision of the Watchtower, wants to go around. But even still, Solar's making a safe Bailing Nest here. He will be able to hold aggression fairly easily. Oh, he's going to see this. He sees the links. He's like, oh, that's a weird location for them to be going right now. Yeah, and he sees all these links. He knows exactly what's coming, and he's going to be very happy with his build choice oh, on man. the defense here. Well, the proclivity of Zerg in online tournaments, too, which Solar is known as the king of online tournaments. Man, he's played a lot of ZBZs. Let's see how well he holds this one. He needs those Banelings. The Banelings isn't ready yet, and only two links with this queen to help out. Solky could try to break through. It looks like he's just now going to try it. He has the link speed advantage. That's the plan here for Solky, but should have some Banelings coming out right now for Solar. Just one morphing on the top He's of the ramp. He's gonna block the ramp. He's gonna block that ramp. Oh, he barely blocks it, but it's not enough. This Baneling is gonna go down. It's his only morphing Baneling. This could be a huge opening here for Solky. The queen well placed between that Baneling nest and the hatchery. Well, this is what you were talking about. That hatchery should be able to go down now because the hole was just barely not there. The Baneling not coming out in time. And this is just an overwhelming amount of lings now. 19 to seven is the ling count on the map right now. The hatchery survives a bit longer with this Baneling out here. And if he can actually wow. hold the top of the ramp here, it's going to be such an advantage. And the Baneling Nest for Solky was so, so late. It's only finishing up now. But uh, if he had some Banelings earlier on, he could have definitely protected the Lings going at it at that hatchery. But uh, unfortunately, it looks like he's just going to back off at this point. He's going to send in two Lings to scout. Yep. And he's for uh, morphing some Banelings back at home. Maybe he's just planning to defend from here. Just gonna harass the hell out of these uh, drones. That one lane spoke him a bit. You know, this is uh, this is actually gonna become a, a more normal game. Definitely, the advantage goes to Solar. The reason being, like, if you look at the tab, like, if you look at the the UI, you're like, well, it's even workers, army supplies even. They both got the same unit comps. The amount of production cycles and extra larvae that Solar has, and the extra minerals he's mined, gives him like a huge edge, and it gives him a lot of flexibility because he's already made the units he needs to hold here. Let's see how well he micros though. He's Kind of getting caught a little bit away from home here. Yeah, not the best micro there either. Could have tried to surround those links with his own links and save his Banelings, but just morphing some more Banelings back at home and 
is trying to slow down this push and poke at some of these banelings. This is that micro war, that knife fight you were talking about. Looks like Silky is just going to try to come up the ramp, but there is a baneling ready and waiting. Oh, yeah, he's going to need more than that one, though. Okay, he's got three banelings up there. Ooh, this is smart. Solar's going to go for the counter attack. There are a few banelings here waiting from Silky, but he needs to use them. Several drones already going down here. Oh, Loses man. a few links at the front, too. Solar is just doing so well with this multitasking at two places at the same time. Pokes down two drones and is just getting slowly further and further ahead with this play. Yeah, he's getting a lair first. And that's that kind of flexibility I was talking about when you have those extra production cycles. You have that extra larva. It means when you make a few drones, you know, you can actually still have the larva to make more links if you need to right away. Um, and this is something that adds up, like, you know, less and less over time that one advantage he had. Like, it's kind of starting to fade away now. But he's got to have a faster layer. Let's see if this can find anything here. He needs to micro his drones against this. I don't think it should be able to, unless a couple of oh babies coming God. through and four. four. That's pretty huge. It was expensive to do so, but he also scouts the lair here. Ooh, nice micro saves that one drone. Now, anyone will tell you, anyone, any Zerg player will tell you, like, microing against feelings is one of the hardest things to do in the game, but after you've done it for many years, like, that's the kind of thing where you're just, like, on autopilot, like, oh, I can easily yeah, micro the you just become a machine yeah. once you practice it enough. Third base in a Roach Warren comes up for Sulky versus Spire play from Solar. So this game will most likely be determined by, you know, does he does he get the Mutalist out and hold, or, you know, do damage in time, or does Sulky kill him with the overwhelming amount of Roaches off three hatch? That's basically going to be the, the game. It's like Roach versus Muta. Which one comes out on top? Well, this map is really big. It's going to take a long time for the Roaches to get across the map with no speed, no lair right now for Sulky. And we already have one spy, spine crawler made and one making for Solar. So he knows the threats that that are coming from Sulky, and he's preparing to defend at the top of his ramp, as you can see the two spines coming up there, and just going to try to overwhelm Sulky. Sulky still doesn't really know what Solar is transitioning into. This is one of those scary things as, uh, as a Zerg player. Uh, when you see those spines at the top of the ramp, it, it, your heart sinks. You know, you think to yourself like, oh god, is this just it? He's already ready. I still have to do it though, I still have to try. There's no transition point here anymore. I have no tech, I have no lair. Like you said, the Mutalists are almost ready. Okay, he's going to use those banelings to break the spine, so one more is coming up. Yeah, I, I, he can kind of assume what Sulky, or rather what Solar is going for, but no spores just yet. I think he knows the timing of this. But a player who's just sitting back on two base, trying to defend like this, definitely has some tech back at home. Really nice banelings that hit there, actually, for Sulky. Yeah, really good. That was, like, excellent. And now this spine crawl that's left here is pretty weak, but he's got two more on the way and seven Mutalists. thing is... He can make spores after this if he wants to try to survive and hold on, but this game is essentially over if he doesn't do critical damage right here, right now. The drones are off the line. Here come the Mutalists, and he's not doing enough damage here. Yeah, he's really getting no damage done. Oh, the Lings on the ramp going to block those last roaches. Some Lings desperately trying to get into that mineral line, but are actually going to survive. He's going, going to try for the hatch. They're going for the hatch, but he does hold. Just barely. That it looks like be... Silky might not be done yet. He's ramping up for another attack. Only Mutalists can be hard sometimes to stop. A overwhelming ground force. Yeah, you know what? I think like he sees an opening here to maybe just kill that hatch. It's going to be tough to do so, but it's down to what, like less than 200 health. I think it was like 180 or something. And, I mean, obviously it slowly regens, but he doesn't have any transfuse energy or anything like that right now. 250 right now. 250. 258. Okay, he's making more queens, but he doesn't have a transfuse. These mutalists, instead of harassing like they normally would be, they would be like killing drones and killing overlords on the map. They have to be used to keep these lings back. Yeah. On the defense. Uh, essentially, and we do actually have some Lings yeah, trying to get up here and scout. I think at this point, with so many Banelings and the Mutas out in the Lings for Solar, it's going to be extremely hard for Silky really to commit to killing the hatchery without losing a ton of units. So Yeah, he needs a lair. He needs to make a lair. Without a lair, he can't make any more tech. Slow Roaches are not going to be worth anything for the rest of this game. And look at this Banelings morphing here to try to help uh, defend against a possible follow-up push. He can't even really secure those. He's making the spores you were talking about. There's a lot of queens here. Yeah. He's essentially just trying to get ahead in economy. I mean, he has that third base way ahead of Solar. Uh, so he definitely is. He's going to defend with both spores and queens against this meta count. The meta count is not very high yet, so he knows he has some time. Oh, this queen gets caught off creep. May actually go down. He's going to go for Banelings instead, the safer choice. This is such a scary attack because... Like, Solar could potentially win the game if the Mulus wipe all the Banelings. Instead, he's just pressuring while he gets his own third base up. But wow, this is easy. He's really fun, man. Yeah, it's really, really back and forth, even on this big, big map. 
we do have, well, Solky was on camera there, but he's got some links coming into the third base, trying to scout out what's going on. Not much damage done. Now, um, you know, at this point in time, like, the supply is starting to explode in favor of Solar. Part of this is because a lot of uh, extra links had to be made for Sulky to defend, and he lost a lot of units just here and there with the attack, as well as Mutilus harassing the Bane links and killing them. Um, he spent a lot of money on extra queens, too. So you can just see that kind of supply yeah, lead flow here. Worse. And uh, he actually is finally getting that lair up, so... Trying to go into some tech here rather than just pumping out a bunch of units. That's uh, some of the advantage that Solar got with that very early lair. He's probably going to go into roaches here. Um, and he's got a few other choices as to what he might do next. He might try to go into infestors, which is like the common answer to Mutilus. Um, he could also potentially oh, hold that thought. We're going to see his queen's focus is going to force some transfuses. One transfuse missed. Oh, man. He's, he's just straight up fighting down. This. Yeah, he's focusing down all the queens with more energy, and there's no spore around to help out with the fight. I think Sulky is, like, not actually respecting these Mutilus to the level where he should be. This is too many Mutilus. And with good micro, he can actually just pull the weakened ones back. And he's got plus one now, so those glades are doing so much bounce damage. He's just going to come in here and focus down more queens underneath, or rather on top of those spores, not even caring for now. He's just going to wipe the Bailings, and then he can actually start attacking with his ground army. There's not enough roaches on the map at this moment in time. Okay, this is starting to be a bit too much. He's using the glaive bounce to try to get drone kills. He's doing such a good job of just taking out unit after unit. There's kind of a desperate run by for Solki that doesn't get any damage done at the third base of Solar. He has no money to make the roach count that he wants. He wants oh. to build a roach comp, but he can't. Look at where the lair is. It's out there. It's going to give it a bit more health, but I mean, it's very, very vulnerable now that he's taken out all the queens. The Lings are going to come in here, and he's got so many Mutas, too, that he could just fight this. Yeah. He's just going to keep the Banelings away. The Mutas are going to protect the Lings versus Banelings. Oh, he knows so there's not smart. enough Roaches to hold this off, so the Lings could actually just run free. Every time a Baneling comes down, he kills it. He can stop the Queens. This game is over. He has done it. Sol Solar is going to win this. GG. GG. That's it. Solar Whoa. takes the 2-0 over former Titan of Solki. Sick game two there. Really well played. Solar just playing a safer game, responding correctly to the aggression, without even scouting the Roach follow-up, making those blind spines just to be safe, just in case. This guy's played enough ZBZ in online tournaments yeah. and ladder games. I think he's just kind of like, he played that game like it was a ladder game. I mean, yeah, I, I think you're definitely correct. This guy looks so practiced. Uh, definitely one of the guys to look out for the, for this season of SSL. He said that his goal was round the four, but with that kind of play, I mean, I'd, I'd love to get a look at some of his other matchups as well, uh, just to see exactly where he falls, where he lands uh, against some of the other races. But we can tell that his ZBZ is already top notch. All right. Well, we're going to jump into an interview now with our winner in that sexy jacket. Oh, that's so good. It's not even a jacket, it's like a sweater, but yeah, you know it's what I'm a sweater. <laughs> Jersey. It's a yeah. Jersey. He's got his pin on, too. A couple pins there. Looks like there's a star. Dreamhack win pin, I think. Mm. How do you feel to defeat Sulky? I was very nervous, and my hands were very cold in the first match. So the match went actually longer than I expected. He should have been able to end it earlier. But he was warmed up for the second set, and that one was a lot easier. In the new expansion, ZVZ depends on the builds. There's more mind games. There's more options. I was able to prepare well for today's mirror matchup. We lost to Rogue 3-0 in 20 minutes. Uh, Sulky did. <laughs> Sulky lost in 30 minutes this time around to another Zerg. Don't you feel sorry for him? Yeah, he's referring to the Challenger League last season, day one of Star League, where mm. he lost a 3-0. I knew about it, and I didn't really feel bad. I just wanted to advance. He didn't expect to win 2-0 this easily, but he doesn't really feel sorry for him. Sulky just has some bad ZBZ enemies like Shine, like Reckonim, like 7-0 yeah. in Pro League. It's definitely his worst matchup, I'd say. I would agree. I think his best is ZBT. Yeah, yeah. 
I thought Sulky was going to go for a greedy build in the second game. So I just wanted to play safely. And the build that I use works pretty well against greedy builds. So that's why I went for it. Our team started practicing uh, for this expansion much earlier than other teams. So he feels that that's a big part of the reason why he is ahead of other Zergs right now. He's thanking his coaches uh, who went through traffic like crazy uh, to make it today. So he thanks his coaches for driving like crazy to get him here on time. Any other comments you want to make? I didn't expect this many fans to come down to the studio. He wants to thank all the fans who came to see him, even though it's really cold today. Really cold. Really cold. <laughs> Playing against Bial in the round of eight. And he's going to prepare well to show a great match for the fans. Uh, all in that as is everyone else who, uh, who has won so far. I can't wait till the one day where the one Korean player goes, I hate the fans. Screw everybody. I'm going to win the tournament. Yeah. Just like drops the mic. I'm like, Ooh. Well, let's go into the match results here. Uh, Biel versus Trust taking the 2 0. And Solo over Silky, the 2 0. Damn, man, these days are really fast. <laughs> That's right, man. They're like super quick. They're dropping by both of them, ending around 7 30. It's like an hour. They had two 2 0s. But starting from next week, we're actually going to have four best of threes. We're going to have some of our losers' matches um, that may or may not be shown on screen here, but I know that information is out on Team Liquid and stuff like that. Um, but this actually will kind of fill out our round of eight here. It's going to be Ragnarok versus Bion, and then uh, Bial versus Solar. Mm -hmm. And then down here, dropping to the loser's bracket, Sue versus Innovation, and then Sulky versus... Uh, Trust. Trust, that's right. And our next match, next Thursday, is going to be Dark versus Myungshik. And there's EVP coming at you guys. And then Classic versus Alive at PVT. I think there's two more matches besides that as well. Uh, but they're not determined yet because they might be based on who loses, right? So that's why those weren't put up there. So there will be four best of threes next week. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's going to be more StarCraft in one night. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, I'm like pretty sure. I checked the schedule. Like, yeah. It just wasn't up there on the screen. So I'm like, I'm pretty sure. Wolf's got been, the, he's got the info. That might be like an old CG or something, guys. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So uh, that was a really fast day. I don't know. There's like not much else to say. We had two pretty clean sweeps. That first game between Biel and Truss was really interesting. A, a near base trade, uh, but it was a it was a fun day. Yeah, anything, it was. Anything else to say, Wolf? No, man. It's it's great to have you back here. I know you're actually yeah. going to be you're actually going on vacation tomorrow. So like yeah. we won't see you for a while. But there's great commentary with you before you leave. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So thank you guys for watching once again, and we'll see you next week.